All right. What is your problem, kid? Oh my god. All right, everyone, hello, hello. So, I've had a couple people ask me questions like, how did I even get started into Christian witchcraft? And other people asking, how can they get started themselves? Honestly, there's no, like, one way to get started, but I will tell you how I ended up down this very winding, twisty path. So let's get into it. So if I'm gonna be honest with you, like, I, I didn't really discover Christian witchcraft. It kind of discovered me in that I wasn't... I mean, I was pretty young when I started even being interested in magic. I have always been interested in fantasy and stuff, for instance. And my parents have always been very imaginative and fantasy-minded as well, right? So, like, my mom would always have statues of fairies around or other things like that. My dad would play the best games with me. He would make up some really fun, like, kind of fantasy-oriented games that we would just play for, like, a good couple hours on the weekends. Like, they were fun. Right? And so I always loved this kind of fantasy stuff. You know, my dad would take me to see Harry Potter on the weekends, all that kind of stuff. But it was actually <laughs> when I was like, I don't know, 9, 10, 11 that I was watching shows like Naruto. Like, I, I remember being in elementary school watching those and just the whole like chakra system and like the whole stuff, the ninja stuff they were doing. I don't know. That just... And it, like, I was enraptured with all of that kind of nonsense as a kid. <laughs> and so, you know, like kids do, I was out there playing with my friends, doing all the Naruto stuff and looking all that up on our really old family computer and la la la, all that kind of stuff. And I kind of started to realize that like the chakra system was loosely based off of like other existing energy systems like in Taoism, they have the Qi, right, which seemed to be most aligned with what Chakra was kind of basing itself off. And I started to look more into this energy and all this other stuff, and that's how I found Spells of Magic. Spells of Magic is such a trip. I don't even know how to properly explain this to you. This forum was like a gold mine for a little 11, 10 year old me. I gotta tell you, because it was full of the goofiest, goofiest nonsense. It's still up. You can, you can still go on there and look at it. And there were spells like how to speed up or slow down time and how to control the weather and how to, I don't know, control candle flames and, you know, telekinesis and just like the, the goofiest, like most Chunibio nonsense <laughs> on that site. And I loved it. I loved it. I had my little notebook out and I'm writing spells down and I'm like, look at me, I'm a master of time and space. <laughs> oh, I was so dumb. I was so lame. Oh boy. But you know, and this was also back in the days of like shitty internet pages. So like, I absolutely found my way onto a couple of those web pages that were just like covered in sparkly graphics and like really badly formatted pages that were like witchcraft spells <laughs> and just like really silly silly things i had so much fun oh my god i mean come on you tell a 10 year old that magic's real and that you can like control time awful <laughs> terrible <laughs> But anyway, I was like serious. I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna be a witch, TM, and I'm gonna like do all this. Now, I remember we were like going on vacation and I was in the airport and like I had a glow in the dark like plastic wand with this silly spell book from like the book fair. And I also had like a, a pirate binocular thing. Oh, that's what it was, we were at Disney. And like I had a pirate set from there. And then I also like had a spy kit at home also from the book fair. So I was like, I'm a witch, pirate and spy all at once, God. Jesus. <sighs> to be 10 years old again, man, like... <laughs> but now we're going on to 11 years old, we're coming into middle school, and I, like, begged, I begged my mom to get me uh, a witchy witchcraft TM book. The problem is my parents were like... It's not that they even had anything, like, against this stuff, particularly. They just didn't know anything about witchcraft outside of, like, what Hollywood told them. So... Yeah? What you looking at? What you looking at, Beach? Huh? But so, like, they didn't realize that, you know, witches don't, like, just do whatever Hollywood says where they're in some, like, abandoned house doing spooky spook rituals. Like, no. Like, right? They didn't realize that no one's, like, conjuring demons for funsies and stuff, but 
I mean, Jesus, these days maybe they are, but whatever. So, the point is, they their idea of witchcraft was all dark and spook and gloom and whatever, so I begged, I convinced my mom to buy me <laughs> Judica Ill's Pure Magic. Because I was like, no, look, mom, it's pure, it's pure magic. It's like good magic. It's not bad. It's for, it's for like, you know, whatever. In this book, this book was like the bane of my existence after that in 11th grade because, um, you know, you're supposed to read so many books in school and this was the book I chose. And it, it literally took me like all year to get through this because I was so horribly bored. Like I was so bored trying to read this. Also, this book just had like a bunch of silly ass spells, like weight loss spells. And just, just silly, goofy nonsense that, like, I don't know, probably weren't helpful for, like, an 11-year-old. Also, a lot of things that were just inaccessible, like, dream incense and... But they did talk about, like, the basics of stuff, too, though, right? Like, they talked about, like, I don't know, you know, color magic and all that kind of stuff. They had a lot of spirits in here that some of them, I'm like, I don't know... Like, um, why, why, Judica, are you telling me about Capo of Hawaii? Don't do that. That's not for you. <laughs> but obviously the, the discussion about, like, closed practices and all that stuff, uh, would, would not make sense to me for a long time. It definitely didn't make sense at 11. I don't even think I had a concept of it. All I know is that this book was misery to try and read through because I was so bored <laughs> trying to get through it. But in all of this, I also started, uh... I also started looking into things like Wicca because, you know, these kinds of authors that you found on the shelves, Llewellyn and Wiser Books and all that, they were very, like, Wiccan based. So I started trying to be like, okay, witchcraft, Wicca, let me look at it. And oh boy, it. Some people looked at Wicca and were like, yup, this is me, this is my thing. I looked at Wicca and I said, that's really, um, that's really not, it's, no. <laughs> like, that's not. I'm not interested in that, sorry. Mostly because like the there's the structure of the religion didn't it make any sense to me, right? Like, what do you mean the goddess births the god, marries the god, gets pregnant by the god, the god dies, and she births him again, and they just do this every year? That, I don't know, like I, I believed a lot of stupid crap when I was a kid, but that for some reason I was like, no, <laughs> that no. No. <laughs> and on top of that, like, I never had anything against God. Like, to be so for real with you, I never had any problem with, like, the general idea of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Like, I didn't grow up in a religious trauma house, you know? Like, I didn't, because my mom was pretty chill about it. I mean, like, yeah, she made me go to church with her for a long time until I was, like, I don't know, maybe eight or something. Until I could, you know, activate my brain and say, hey, mom, I don't like this and I don't want to do it anymore. But she, that was pretty much it, right? <laughs> like, she never really said much about anything else. Like, she was always chill. My parents were chill. They weren't, like, wild about all this nonsense. They didn't care if I ended up being queer. They didn't care if I, you know, whatever. They, they did not care. So, for me, religious trauma, no. The thing that pissed me off was how mainstream people uh, talked about religion and how they dealt with that. Like, it was always just something that felt like icky and gross to me about religious people, but never really God, you know? And especially as I got older and I got more socially conscious, I really had a problem with like people being anti-LGBTQ, people being like, um, all, you know, all the purity culture crap I started hearing about. I did not like any of that. And so that's what really made me be like even more like, mm -mm, bye, get away from me with that nonsense. So. I remember just very blatantly looking at God and holding up this book and being like, I don't see what the problem is, TBH, my man. Like, I, w I was looking at him and I, I remember praying and being like, what exactly is the issue if you bless somebody and, like, incorporate basil into it? Like, at what point? Like, what is what is so bad about that? Everyone makes it seem like it's so demonic, evil, bad. What? It, how? I had I had the audacity unlock since I was born because I remember just I just was like arguing it with him I was like like a lawyer like going through it. I'm like listen like it like you made all this stuff Like and it doesn't make any sense like why would you put all of it here if we're not supposed to use it? Like you, there's all these Bible verses that say plants and animals can like do stuff that they can speak and they can hear you And they they know you so like I don't get it like what's the problem and then I ended up getting answers in the form of just happening upon resources one of the most notable ones i can think of is when i was like i was at some festival or some fair with my parents and like i don't even know like how i i saw it but 
because I was pretty far away from whatever little book stand that was popped up at this festival, but I just like caught so like sight of something on the shelf and I ran, I was like, be on like beeline for it. And like immediately was like, mother and father, please purchase this item for me. I need it. That item was this. <laughs> And it remains like a cornerstone of like jumping point for magical research for me. And in fact, in discovering Christian witchcraft, uh, this is one of the things I recently I referenced for it. Not the only one, but let me tell you, this was absolutely the first like landing point for me to actually theologically understand what the hell magic was, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Only problem is as a teenager, I really wasn't like mature enough <laughs> at all to bother with this kind of stuff. like. I was really interested in the mix a bunch of shit in a bottle and call it a potion phase of witchcraft. I wasn't really interested in like the philosophy and the theology and the mysticism just yet because like I was only 14. You know, I mean as, as, as smart as I thought I was back then, I really wasn't that mature and I wasn't ready for the heavy stuff. Like if you had handed Jürgen Moltmann to me when I was 14 and told me to read it in a year, I would have cried. I would have actually just, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> I really don't. But nonetheless, it did take me a pretty long time to read this. Um, and as it is, I still actually, mo even now this guy's writing style is kind of dry. So like there is more in here that I've leafed through. Oh yeah, I've definitely leafed through this. <laughs> But like, I haven't just read it hardcore, like I haven't gone through it with all my stickies yet. I mean, my god, by page 400, I think I got the idea. Nonetheless, they just were really dry and really hard to get through, so I was like, mm, I'm gonna read books about how to make money spells. <laughs> but obviously as time went on, I got deeper into it and deeper into it, and I matured, and I started getting really interested in the history and the background and the mysticism and the philosophy and all the other stuff, so... At this point, now I could I could feel well-rounded between both the theology and the witchcraft side, <laughs> but for a long time, nonetheless, if you want to get started in Christian witchcraft, first of all, um, I definitely recommend you pre-order Discovering Christian Witchcraft because this is literally like, like this no longer would be my jumping off point if I had had that book. There were no resources when I was starting Christian Witchcraft, okay? There were like none. There was really only one book. Um, the path of a christian witch and that was just like a lot of memoir that just combined wicca and christianity which i was not looking for because i i don't care about wicca right so now there's a ton of other books out there but even then as i looked through them there weren't a lot that did what christian like discovering christian witchcraft does so if you have a minute check out my website pre-order the book it comes out march 1st that one that one is academic it's personal it's got cultural components, it's got all kinds of different things, angels, demons, you know, calendars of the wheel of the year stuff, like building traditions, building spells, building divination uh, skills, and like psychic skills, all that kind of stuff. That book has literally everything in it that you would need to start. <laughs> so pre-order that book uh, as a way to start, but also, genuinely, I fully believe, if there's one thing that I believe in from my early days with like the Wicca kind of stuff, it is the year of learning. The year of learning is massive and it's exactly what it sounds like. You spend a year learning anything and everything before you start doing stuff. Because a lot of people with this damn, I used to be a witch, now I'm Christian, God save me nonsense. Usually what it is is people who they F around and they find out. That's all there is to it. They don't, like, you know, if you wouldn't just start mixing chemicals in the lab and then telling people to stay away from chemistry because it's so dangerous, don't do that with witchcraft. <laughs> like, don't, don't do that. That, don't do that. So take the time to learn. And when I say learn, I mean learn about the history of Christian mysticism. Learn about the different types of early Christianity. Learn about, uh, you know, mystic figures like St. Hildegard, like uh, St. Cyprian of Antioch. Like, learn about philosophers like Agrippa, learn about uh, the mythic figures like King Solomon, like learn about these figures and the grimoires attributed to them, all this other kind of stuff, because there is such a huge, long storied history of Christian magic. Look into your culture, look into your folklore, look into the folk magic. If you're Italian, for instance, starting off with like books like these with Italian folk magic, they'll show you how much Catholicism is woven into this. There's a lot. Look for examples of magic in the Bible, right? Like look for things and ask yourself, does this sound like a spell? Like for instance, Leviticus 14, go ahead and ask yourself if that sounds like maybe a spell or not, right? And above all, learn about yourself. Learn about yourself. 
because Christianity, witchcraft, both of these things are very personal. And when you combine them together, there's no one way that it should look, right? Like if you like to do stuff with the ocean and you hate cooking, well then don't try to be a kitchen witch, be a sea witch, right? Like Mary Star of the Sea, she, that's a, a, a name you can pull out in the middle of your witchery. Like there's so much stuff going on with the ocean that you can do with just the ocean. And if you do like cooking, by all means, be a kitchen witch, right? Then it's saints like uh, Saint Isidore that would probably be really helpful. Him and his wife who just had that endless pot of soup going that never went empty, right? We've talked about those two before. Learn about yourself and what resonates with you and what ways in which will help you most authentically connect to God. And remember that that's the whole point of Christian witchcraft is to connect to God. So with all that said, uh, that is the long and twisting tale. <laughs> of me discovering Christian witchcraft. And so I hope that kind of breaks it down for you guys. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been thinking about it for a long time. And it's really been a blast. It has absolutely made me be unafraid to say, yes, I am a spiritual religious person um, and I'm more than okay with that. I'm comfortable with my relationship with God. I'm happy with how it works. I love doing what I do. And if you're looking for that kind of self-directedness, yeah, you really you really should consider checking out. It is a wonderful, wonderful path. So with all that said, um, I hope this is helpful and I will see you guys next week for some more discussions about resources and other things like that. See ya.